Good morning, friends. How is everybody on this beautiful Tuesday morning? Oh my goodness, it just dawned on me. I think I forgot to take the garbage cans out this morning. I hope my husband did because it's really full. So I'm like, oh my God, I should have done that before I started this, but I already sat down. Shit, oh my goodness. Okay, so we're gonna do this. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, I'm rambling now, sorry. Uh, today we are uh, reviewing Ghost OG from Venom Extracts. I absolutely have adored smoking their extracts uh, recently. This is the packaging that it comes out of. I love their branding. I have their logo here. I even wear their shirt on some of their reviews because I do love them. I love that they put them in these little plastic containers so I can just hold them up like this for you guys to see. Um, however, this is extremely stable. I can pick it up. It does not stick to my fingers. It actually did kind of break a little bit here. It actually gave me my first dab, which is kind of nice. So we are going to go ahead and use that. Oh, what a day. We are having such a great day. It is beautiful outside. We are going to do some walkies with the puppies. I did an Amazon review on my gimbal last night. Had a lot of fun. We have changes coming up in the world. It is, this is, this next year, 2020, uh, hopefully it'll be a great year. So let's do this. Put this here, we're just gonna go ahead and heat this up before we talk about it. I haven't done a review here on, you, on Facebook in a while since we're doing a YouTube blackout today because YouTube uh, can't seem to not lie to their creators. The creators decided uh, maybe it's time for the creators to teach YouTube a little bit of a lesson. So that's what we're working on today. So come on in, let's smoke, let's dab, let's talk about it. I have my National Geographic magazine sitting right here today. We are gonna put that up. We are going to be reading out of it today. I have learned so much from it. It has been such an amazing, trip a journey i love this magazine um i'm gonna go back through all of my other videos and make sure that i notate those on there because they're just amazing so i hope you guys are having a great day today how's it going how's the weather how you feeling i know the weather wow can't come up with anything more original than the weather right so does it matter big papa you getting stiff the cold outside he loves it and then he comes inside warms up and then stiffens up so poor boy so as always guys fuck cancer fuck depression fuck anxiety in with the good and out with the bad hey enrique things are good we're smoking oh oh yeah mm -hmm. that's good stuff Oh, and then this will change the flavor, too. <coughs> oh, so yummy. Mm. Oopsie. So, real quick, I want to remind you guys, I have a contest, a giveaway going on right now. Um... All you have to do is subscribe to my YouTube channel and subscribe to my WeTube channel and you will be qualified to win whew, some cannabis seeds for Christmas. So you can grow or you can actually technically, by law, I have to say um, that they are, what are they again? God, I, my words are not working here today, that they are collectibles. So, you can collect your own seeds. What you do with them from there is none of my business. <laughs> oh, that Dr. Pepper tastes blah, 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 blah. Taste really good today. Let's see if I can get the little venom mug in here. There we go. That's better. So, what a day. Oh, goodness. So, let's go ahead and grab my book. Uh, when I started out today, I was at a pain level of 8 with an anxiety level of about 5. Um, I don't know where my pain's going yet, so um, as soon as this starting to takes effect, I'll let you know how I start feeling with it. Um, so this is Alien OG. It is a 50-50 uh, hybrid. Um, has about a 20 to a 26% THC rating or level and a 1% CBN. 
which is amazing. CBN is a really good, uh, really good part of the plant. It is more of like an aged thing. So it's more of like an aged, when you have your wine connoisseurs, it's that aging process. So good stuff, good, good, good. So this is Alien OG, brings you to a unique combination that will tend to your problems in a very effective way. Alien OG is very beneficial for your mental and physical health. The effects of this are creative, energizing, euphoria, focused, and relaxing. Medicinally to treat anxiety, bipolar disorder, chronic pain, depression, loss of appetite, migraines, nausea, PTSD, and stress. Good morning, Chrissy. How are you doing, my dear? So, this has been a beautiful strain. This is a very effective, or very... I don't know full effect strain you've got you get a little bit of the, the body and a little bit of the mind so you get a little bit of both I noticed that I get a lot more creative during these times so I'll find creative little ways of doing posts or learn something new right now I'm kind of drive uh, diving into learning how to edit my own videos because I don't really know how to do that yet so I'm kind of working on it so you know I kind of believe in one of those things that you know we have to improve ourselves as much as we can every day so that's what it is I am looking at welcome guys welcome welcome so that is awesome so we're gonna do one more dab well we'll probably end up doing two more dabs but we're gonna do another dab um, and then we are gonna read from this National Geographic medical marijuana magazine this thing is amazing guys I encourage you pick it up um, read it it is got, I mean this thing is packed full of great information it's packed full of amazing stuff uh, I've really enjoyed reading it I've been reading it on my YouTube channel oh excuse me wow I get excited <laughs> um, I've been reading it on my YouTube channel for the, those of you that don't know I have a YouTube channel it's called free my cure dot or my website's at free my cure dot org um, but my YouTube channel is also free my cure um, the reason why I had that, I've had that name for a few years now, um, is because it has been federally illegal for so long. Oh, that's amazing. I'm glad you're doing great today, Chrissy. Great. That's awesome. Um, so, um, I just lost my whole train of thought. So I've been, I've been doing this for about three years now as an advocate for marijuana. Um, the reason why I decided to become an advocate for marijuana was because I was very, very against it. I thought like everybody else did that, you know, cannabis, medical marijuana, it is a drug. It's a class one narcotic. It is a drug. It is not something that you want to promote. It's not something that you do. And I grew up knowing this or going through this or thinking this. Um, I went through medical school, went through college. I did all of this. Yes, my love, I'm telling them. Mouthy. <laughs> Raffy's over there barking. He's like, mom, you're long winded. Um, but I went to school and we were always taught that, you know, the war on drugs, that's exactly what this is, that they war on drugs. So I was really against it. I mean, I was really against it. I, I didn't, never did hard drugs. It's not something that I never ever really cared to do. However, I did have a very large opioid addiction and I had it for over a decade. I was so fucked up from opioids and using them that it was, it was so sad. And I bring this up to you today because I was at the post office yesterday um, picking up a, a package I'm gonna do an unboxing, unboxing for today. So stay tuned for another video for me today. I haven't decided if I'm gonna do it on Instagram, if I'm gonna do it here, if I'm gonna do it on Twitter, but we'll be someplace. Um, but uh, yeah, I, crap, lost my whole train of thought. Where was I? <laughs> hate when I do this I get off on a tangent but I was at the post office yesterday and this poor woman reminded me so much of me um, so much of me that it actually hurt um, she wasn't all there she just she was you could tell she was very very loaded um, on whatever it was she was on and I got that same look when, when I had that opioid addiction. Um, I got that same way and it became so hard and it, it wasn't because, you know, I wanted to get high. It was, I was trying to escape pain that I, I didn't understand. 
Uh, I didn't understand, nor did I care to understand, that the pain medicine is supposed to ease the pain up, not take it away completely. So I kept popping those pills to try to take that pain away completely, and it didn't work. I just ended up a zombie. And that's what I saw yesterday, and it, it was saddening. I mean, it really saddened me. It was so scary. So I'm like, uh, I tried to give the, you know, the, the, the gentleman with her, I think he was, I don't know if he was with her. I'm not sure what it was. But um, he had asked me, he's like, what's that box that you have? So I'm like explaining to him what it is, and he's not really getting it. And I'm like, marijuana. He's like, oh, okay. And he's like, what do you do? So I kind of sat there and I stood there and talked to him a little bit. And I kind of, you know, told him that I educate people and I help them get to the products and services that they need. So if they're needing CBD, I help them get to that. If they're needing THC, I help them get to that. Um, hopefully here in the very, very, hopefully, hopefully in the future, I will be able to start helping people with their THC or with their, can with their RSO oil. That's my ultimate goal. Um, is to be able to make it and to be able to help and by giving some of it away that's my goal is to help other people with this to help teach them and help them understand what i needed to learn um about five years ago um i was in a really bad place i had ended up moving out of a, I, we we took it we took a break basically um a short break and uh during that time, I got clean. I got clean from opioids because he was helping me at that time get clean. And I made some stupid decisions. It was a whole big mess. And so I ended up weaning myself the rest of the way off of opioids and started cannabis on my own. Now granted, I never used hard drugs, but I did smoke cigarettes. Um, I had never smoked marijuana before that time. I had never done any of these things and I was so against them. But I was at the last step. I had been diagnosed as terminal. I had been reading about the Rick Simpson oil. I had been reading about different things, but it is very, very expensive to get a hold of. And it's very expensive to make sure you get the whole amount of it because you need the whole 60 doses, 60 to 100 doses of RSO to really help, especially if, if you have cancer. Not only do you need that much, here, let me fix my camera here. Sorry guys, you're, I'm making you slip. That's better. So as I um, cleaned up on my own and figured things out, I started to learn. Um, and I started to be able to see those things in other, in other people that I was seeing in myself and I was trying to change those things. Um, once I finally got clean and it was a, and, I, and I got better and things did so much better, um, it took a while. It took a long time, actually. Um, things had gotten a lot better at home. We had made things better. And I had been able to start Rick Simpson Oil. So you guys have seen the post lately that I am republishing my RSO diary so everybody can see it and everybody can get that information again. Um to the weed tube um the description is or the the link is on my posts uh or on my page check it out do subscribe because i am giving uh a, i'm giving a lucky subscriber or one or two um some souvenir seeds so you can enjoy them at home to collect or collect or whatever it is you do with them i don't know it's up to you um wink wink <laughs> i don't know how to do that um, so, um, yeah, these are things that I've started to work towards and I have cleaned up and gotten to. In this time, I kind of look back on my life and I get these like miniature epiphanies and I learned that some of the things that I did when I was on opioids wasn't always the best thing and I couldn't always control it. And so I started to be able to see that in other people. And so I could see it when they were on those, those medications and they were just starting to lash out. I'm like, okay, it's okay. Um, I can see what's going on. We'll talk later. And it's, it's not anything personal. It's the, that opioid rage is what I want to call it. It's, uh, you know, it's kind of a, a mix between chemo fog and opioid rage. You can't always think of the words it is you were trying to say and you're so angry so it kind of goes together and it really makes a mess 
so that's one thing that cannabis has really really helped me with it has given me a little bit of that 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 switch in my brain to go stop and think then speak because I, I was just like everybody, you know, I, I was a very passionate, I am a very passionate woman. I, I, once I, t I get involved in something and I'm about that, it's, I'm all about it. It's all or nothing with me. I'm kind of a weirdo at that. So, um, in doing that, I've been learning a lot about myself. So, one of the things that I have noticed and I have learned through, through a lot of times is that, People don't always seem to get along and sometimes we may have really good information to share and people won't hear it and it's not your fault and it's not their fault so I, I want to say and I want to make this kind of a short thing we can get to my magazine I know I'm I'm, I'm cutting it off chill <laughs> you little mouthy boy over there um, Take a little time between, you know, now and the first of the year. Take a little time. Think about what you're going to say. Think about what's going on. Think about, hey, you know, maybe that other person is having a bad day. And maybe they're lashing out for, you know, a good reason or a bad reason or whatever it is. But right now is not the time that we talk about it. So, um, yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's kind of one of those things that I've... I don't know, you, I was so against marijuana, you guys don't even know how against marijuana I am, or I was. And once I ended up doing marijuana, the very first time I did an edible, oh my god, I lost it. I was suicidal, I was a mess. I, nobody told me don't eat the whole thing. So I ate the whole thing. And I was so high, and I was so high for so long let me tell you it was it was actually looking back on it now I wish that paranoia wasn't there uh, because I would have really enjoyed it a lot more it would have relaxed me a lot more however it tensed me up it put me into a tailspin I I don't know it was like immediate I hit the wall and I'm like okay I know what I did wrong I know where I fucked up so that's you know what I'm trying to say in a nutshell is the country has has woken up and has decided that, oops, we fucked up. That A, prohibition, it doesn't work. And B, um, cannabis users are gentle most of the time. There are, there are always cases of other things and I have written about other cases where somebody has actually gotten violent because of cannabis well not because of cannabis but because of what was in the cannabis so you have to be careful with how you get your cannabis you have to be careful with how you get your vaping products with your cannabis make sure that those are all name brand don't buy them off the black market um, even the ones with THC in them if they are not being made correctly they are causing illnesses very very bad illnesses um, I've heard of popcorn lungs. I mean, I've been reading all of these stories. And as we move into this new era, really, this, this new decade um, of federal legalization on cannabis, we're going to be learning a lot more. And I wanna, I really wanna encourage you guys to, to, to read the information very carefully, make sure you look at it, make sure you, um, read it very carefully um there's a lot of information in there there's a lot of stuff to to vote on when it comes that time um so please make sure that you read that stuff very 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 carefully um and thank you thank you for hearing us thank you for hearing all of us advocates that have been involved in growing that community uh you know of of weed legalization of even with that recreational um legalization because that's really next i was reading an article the other day about how um even recreational cannabis right now could do a lot more benefits to the country because a it would offer a lot more jobs b more tax money so we would get out of that deficit um 
oh my god, we would be able to do so many more studies um, based on how somebody's, you know, in you know, consuming their products, whether they're recreational or medical. This goes a long way. So I have also joined in forces with the recreational people. I do believe it is time that we go ahead and legalize all of this. It is what we need to do. It is time the country has spoken. I mean, we are in the 80 percentile at this point in time saying, yes, let's legalize cannabis. So, um, and then we have a extremely amazing, reputable magazine here, and they dedicated an entire magazine to cannabis. So this is a new era. This is a new decade. Um, and thank you. So let's do this. So today's article, um, I decided we're going to do a little bit shorter and I'm going to kind of uh, talk on something that I haven't really spoke on in quite some time. Um, something, a, a, a part of the medical marijuana system, at least in Arizona, that is extremely beneficial. Here, let me fix the camera again. That is extremely beneficial and is extremely vital to, um, to this entire system, and that's the caregivers. There are some amazing, amazing caregivers out there that do amazing work with their patient, with their you know patients that they are contracted with. Um, they do a lot of things. They do the research to find out which strains to get for those patients. They ask those patients, you know, okay, how do you want to consume your cannabis? What do you want in your cannabis? How, you know, they go through all of these steps to work with these cannabis patients and they, they're so amazing. So we're going to talk about the caregiver um, medical migrants today. So where's my glasses? I know I show my, I, I don't know how I feel about the glasses yet. I don't know if I like them. Um, kind of need a little bit, I don't know. They're kind of scratched up. I suck at holding, uh, putting glasses in my purse or doing stuff. So uh, I don't know. It is what it is. So this, blah, blah, blah. the seizure started in May 2013 when she was six months old. Infantile spasms, they were called. It looked like a sterile or a startled reflex. Her arms rigid at her side, her face a frozen mask of fear, her eyes fluttering from side to side. Adeline, Patrick's little brain raced and surged as though an electromagnetic storm were sweeping through it. It's your worst possible nightmare, her mother Megan says. Just awful. Awful, awful to watch your child in pain, in fear, and there's nothing you can do to stop it. From their small town in southern Maine, Megan and her husband Ken took Addie to Boston to consult with neurologists. These epileptic seizures, they concluded, were the result of a um, congenital brain malformation called, oh yeah, I'm, I'm going to butcher this word, totally butcher it, and I apologize now, um, skin cephaly, one of the hemispheres of Addie's brain had not developed fully in utero, leaving an abnormal cleft. She also had a re related condition called optic nerve hypoplasia which caused her eyes to wander and which further tests revealed made her all blind by summer. Addie was having 20 to, ter bleh, sorry, 20 to 30 seizures a day, then 100 a day, then 300. So before we go on, I'm gonna go ahead and move this because I wanna show you this picture of this beautiful girl Addie and her mama. So let's get this down here in the front. Make sure we have this picture good for you to see. Hello! I'm gonna butcher your name, sweetie. T-A-Y-L. Hello, how are you? So, let's see. It says over the picture and under the picture. So, under the first picture, Adeline Patrick sits inside a teapot, or a teepee, teapot, sorry, TP in the playroom at Realm of Caring in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Adeline was born with a brain malformation and suffers from multiple forms of seizures. And then the picture here, 
Uh, Megan Patrick kisses her daughter Adeline in the playroom at the Realm of Caring in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Okay, so uh, during the Realm of Caring harvest in eastern Colorado, the 17-acre outside grow is harvested by hand and dried, draped over hanging poles in a huge warehouse. Look at this picture. Look at those buds. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Oh. Then 300. Everything was misfiring all at once, says Megan. We were afraid we were going to lose her. The Patrick swallowed the advice they'd been given and heavily medicated Addie with anti-convulsions. The powerful med reduced her seizures, but they also put her to sleep for almost the entire day. Addie was gone, Megan says. She just lay there, sleeping all the time like a rag doll. Megan quit her job as a third grade teacher to care for her daughter. Over nine months, Addie was hospitalized 20 times. That's, that's, oh, that's, that's sad. When Megan's in-laws suggested they, t they look into medical marijuana, ma blah, blah, blah. I can't speak today. Uh, when Megan's in-laws suggested they look into medical mar marijuana, she recoiled. This is a federal illegal drug we are talking about, she recalls thinking. But she did her own research, a good deal of acidontal evidence shows that high CBD strains of cannabis can have strong anti-seizures effects, and medical literature through scant goes back surprisingly far. In 1843, the Irish doctor named William Brooke O'Shaughnessy published an article detailing how cannabis oil had effectively arrested an infant's restlessness convulsions relentless convulsions sorry um in september 2013 the patrick's met with met with elizabeth thiel a pediatric neurologist at boston massachusetts general hospital who's helping to lead a study of cbd in treating in refractory childhood epilepsy legally thiel could not prescribe cannabis to addy or even recommend it but she strongly advised the patrick's to consider all medical options Encouraged, Megan went to Colorado and met with parents whose epileptic children were taking strains of cannabis called Charlotte's Web, named for a little girl, Charlotte Fiji, who'd responded, uh, responded astonishing well, astonishingly well to the low THC, high CBD oil pr produced near Colorado Springs. What Megan saw in Colorado impressed her. The, no the growing knowledge base of cannabis producers, the kinship of parents coping with similar ordeals, the quality of the dispensaries, and the expertise of the testing labs in ensuring consistent cannabinet or cannabis oil for Malaysian. I'm not sure what that is. Colorado Springs had become a mecca for remarkable medical migration. More than a hundred families with children who had life-threatening medical conditions had uprooted themselves and moved. These families, many of them associated with nonprofit organizations called Realm of Caring, considered themselves medical refugees. Most couldn't medicate their children with cannabis in their home states without risking arrest for trafficking or even child abuse. Megan experimented with high CBD oil. The seizures all but stopped. She weaned Addie off some of her other meds and it was as though her daughter had come back from a coma. It sounds like a small thing, says Megan. I'm gonna cry, oh my God. <laughs> Sorry. Um. Sorry. It sounds like a small thing, says Megan. But if you have a child who smiles for the first time in many, many months, 
Well, your whole world changes. But early last year, the Patricks had made up their minds they would move to Colorado to join the movement. It was a no-brainer, Megan says. If they were growing something on Mars that might help Addie, I'd be in my backyard building a spaceship. <laughs> Sorry. I'm happy. <laughs> When I met the, Mat the Patricks in late 2014, they'd settled into their new home on the north side of Colorado Spe Springs. Pikes Peaks looms in their living room window. Addie is thriving. Since her <laughs> since first taking CBD oil, she hasn't been hospitalized. She still has a she still has occasional seizures, one or two a day but they're less intense. Her eyes wander less. She listens more. She laughs. She learns how to, she learned how to hug and has discovered the power of her vocal cords. Oh my goodness, sorry. <laughs> I just, I love stories like this because it's, it's amazing that something like this can give us our kids back or give us our wives or husbands back or do any of these things for us that we need. Um, because it is, it's so hard. It's the hardest words I ever heard in my life were that you're gonna die and you're not gonna make it. This is gonna kill you. And that killed me inside because there was nothing I could do. Two years later, after doing a full round of, of RSO, sorry, <laughs> of doing RSO, I'm, cancer free and it's an amazing feeling you know I didn't know after I did the RSO treatment I didn't know for two years after I did the RSO treatment what it had done for me but it really did something and then this this little girl she's got her life back her entire life you know and she has a life that she gets to live now which is an amazing thing and it's a plant it's you know it's a plant it's not some chemical we're making in our bathtub. It's not big pharma that's drugging us to non-compliance. And because that's what it is, we're we're drugged to compliance. They want us to do what they're what we're told. That's you know, our parents were known as the yes men. So that's what government likes. They like that yes men thing. So this is waking people up, and I love these stories. Sorry, I had to stop crying for a second. Oh my goodness. So, when I met the Patricks in late 2014, they'd settled in their new home, uh, well, of course. Critics contend that realm of caring parents are using their kids as guinea pigs, that not enough studies have been done, that many, if not most, of the claims can be dismissed as a result of the placebo effect. It's true, we don't know the long-term effects of CBD, and we should study it. Megan says, but I can tell you this, without it, our Addie would be a sack of potatoes. No one asks, she notes, about the long-term effects of a widely used pharmaceutical that has been routinely prescribed for her two-year-old. Our, our insurance pays for it. No questions asked, she says, but it's highly addictive, highly toxic, turns you into a zombie, and can actually kill you, and yet it's perfectly legal. Thiel says early results of the CBD study are extremely encouraging. CBD is not a silver bullet. It doesn't work for everything, she cautions, but I'm impressed. It clearly can be a very effective treatment for many people. I have several kids in the study who've been completely seizure-free for over a year. Reports like these only deepens Megan's frustrations with what she's come to regard as, as the <clears throat> imbecility of federal marijuana laws but put her at risk of arrest for transporting a drug that would get a mouse high across state lines 
it's acceptable, she says, that we're allowing our citizens to suffer like this. But Patrick's are in a good place now. But the Patrick's are in a good place now. Happier than they've been in years. And we have Addie back again, Megan says. If I wasn't living through this, I don't know that I'd believe it myself. I don't feel this cannabis is a miracle cure, but I feel like it should be a tool in every neurologist toolbox all across the country. Oh my goodness. So, um, under the first picture, a worker helps with the harvest of the Stanley Brothers specially bred high CBD strains of cannabis, including Charlotte's Reb, for the realm of caring parents. Oh. Behind this one, a gardener cuts sh shoots for cloning from high CBD cannabis plants that the Stanley's brothers grow for realm of caring patients. It's a littler picture, but it is still very nice. Uh, at the end, that is the end. So we will do one last dab, especially because I uh, probably have makeup everywhere. I know I'm not everywhere. I don't have any Kleenex. I guess I next time I read that magazine, I need to get Kleenex out. Oh my goodness, that is a beautiful story. I mean, something that they can give a parent their child back that is definitely worth looking at. And um, you know, since we are talking about CBD today. I will be on live here in a few minutes um, again um, to open a box that I picked up at the post office yesterday with CBD in it. So let's do one last dab and we will get this going. Oh my goodness. That just, I mean, it just pulls at my heartstrings. It makes me, I don't know, it makes me so happy when I read stuff like that and people are, are, are or getting their children back or getting their lives back or whatever it is. I love all of those stories. They touch me so, so much. But I get so mad because we've been lied to for so long. And the odd thing is, is that one something that, that the president did state yesterday in a vaping um, meeting, I guess, Prohibition doesn't work, and it doesn't. It hasn't worked. It's never worked. Um, so you might as well legalize at least this part of it. I mean, I don't know about black market vape. That, that I mean, you still need to be very, very careful with where you're getting your vape products from. Make sure that those suckers are are um, are fully tested and they come from a reputable place. I don't want anybody to get sick or any issues because that is what's happening is people are going to the hospital and they're getting very, very sick. And some of it is coming from, most of it's coming from the tobacco type products, but some of it is actually coming from the THC products, the black market THC products. So please be careful with those. <clears throat> so, oh my goodness. of fun I can as I'm sucking on it when it's this warm I can watch the oil start dripping down into the oil catcher so it's kind of neat it's kind of pretty actually so you know one of the things that I I have I keep forgetting to do this month is to let you guys know what I'm thankful for but one of the things that I am extremely extremely thankful for is the fact that I have so so, so many friends here on Facebook, on YouTube, on Twitter, on Instagram, on Snap. Well, not too many on Snapchat. I don't know if I have any on Snapchat, actually. I'm not really good with that. I kind of play with the app because it has filters, and I like the filters. But I really don't do much on Snapchat. I don't know why. I guess I should. So, if any of you guys have a Snapchat, uh, you can always go to my website. I think I have it up there. I, I don't even remember what my freaking name is, either. So, I will post... Uh, my Snapchat name in the comments if anybody wants to friend me on Snapchat because I don't know if I have any friends on Snapchat. Guess I should find out, huh? So as always guys, fuck cancer, fuck depression, fuck anxiety, in with the good and out with the bad.
was a big one. Oh. 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 <coughs> so that one hurt a little. That was a little hot and hurtful. It wasn't really hot, but it was a lot there. Hmm. So this one, for some reason, kind of hits me behind the ears. Makes my ears really warm. It makes my ears kind of ring. Um, it definitely has that spice in your throat and in your chest. Um, it will knock the wind out of you with a big enough dab. Just so you know. <laughs> Oh, goodness. I have like little pieces of dab all over my mat here. Like I don't know what the dab mat's actually for, the bong or all of the dab you lose. Oh, goodness. So, today I started out with a pain level of about nine. Um, now I'm probably only at about a six. It's not too, too bad. Um, well, kind of a six, seven type thing. Uh, my anxiety was a little bit higher. I have to do some stuff today. So, um, I was at a 5 when I first started this. Um, I'm definitely a little bit more relaxed, especially around the neck area. So, it does help a lot more. So, yeah. Uh, very, very nice. It definitely burns the throat, though. Yeah, wait. So, as always, guys, have a great day. I will see you guys tomorrow. Hi, babies. Say hi, Tickers. He always has to come up and say goodbye. I know. You just think you're a superstar, huh? You're a superstar. Yeah, you're a superstar. Can you say hi? Yeah?